So Phase 4 in Classic WoW is right around the corner, in fact it's coming out next month. This next patch will most notably give us the Zolkarub raid instance. This raid marks a turning point in Blizzard's design philosophy, as when Phase 4 comes out it's going to make some substantial changes to Classic WoW's game dynamics. It changes the gameplay of Classic in quite a substantial way, so in this video I'm going to be going over what Phase 4 means for Classic WoW, the new notable items, as well as how the game will be different. So let's get right into it. So before going into the details of Zul'Gurub, I first must talk about why Blizzard put this 20-man raid into the game to begin with. So as opposed to every raid that we have in Classic up to this point being 40-man, the raid size of Zul'Gurub is halved. Now the logic at the time was that they felt that casual players back in the day had too hard a time getting into raiding, as the barrier to entry to Molten Core, Inixia and Blackwing Lair was too high. So Blizzard designed Zul'Gurub as a stepping stone for players to go from 5-man dungeons to the much tougher 40-man raids. It was kind of envisioned by Blizzard to be the in-between stop between UBRS and Molten Core, at least in terms of difficulty. Another thing worth mentioning is that it's the first raid up to this point without an attunement, so Blizzard clearly wanted Zul'Gurub to be the raid for people that are new to PvE and perhaps just reached level 60. Although this is a new raid, this is by no means on par with Blackwing Lair in terms of difficulty. This raid will be pugged quite a lot. Expect to see many pug groups looking for people to raid Zul'Gurub with, and guilds selling items in exchange for carrying, since the bosses themselves are not all that difficult. Although cutting edge raiders will still want to raid ZG for some of the items that you can get. So Zul'Gurub is quite a bit different from other raids that we've seen up to this point. Now Molten Core is basically a gear and spec check if the tanks have the right amount of defense, DPS have enough attack power, and healers have enough plus healing. Blackwing Lair on the other hand is more about managing threat, that's kind of the theme of the raid. Can your tanks coordinate with each other? Can your DPS find the right balance between damage and threat? Zul'Gurub on the other hand is more about dynamic boss mechanics and coordination and movement as a raid. The bosses in Zul'Gurub are quite a bit more interesting than some of the encounters that we have in Molten Core, at least from a mechanical perspective. Another interesting thing about Zul'Gurub is that its raid lockout time is only 3 days, as opposed to the 7 days of Molten Core and Blackwing Lair. So you can gear up very quickly by running Zul'Gurub, as you can clear Zul'Gurub multiple times in a week which is something that you couldn't do in MC and Blackwing Lair. Now what about the loot? The loot in Zul'Gurub is actually itemized really well. Even people that have Blackwing Lair on farm will find interest in some of the pieces in Zul'Gurub. Now I believe up to this point Blizzard had started to get a lot better at itemizing equipment. I feel like when they made Molten Core they didn't really understand what classes needed what stats. The items in Molten Core are pretty hit or miss. Molten Core has some infamous terrible epics like Thunderstrike and Shard of the Flame. These kind of items don't exist in Zul Group. Pretty much all of the gear is statted reasonably well for a given spec. Even the worst items in Zul'Gurub are probably still an upgrade for people in pre-raid best in slot. However that being said, the standout items primarily go to Caster DPS. Caster DPS see a substantial increase in power level in Phase 4, with many new items increasing spell hit, which is the most important stat for mages and warlocks. It's very rare to see an item in Classic WoW right now with spell hit on the item, despite it being the most important stat for caster DPS. Zul'Gurub loot changes that. Items like Cloak of Consumption, Jindo's Bag of Whammies, gives caster DPS some much needed spell hit that they've been starving for. Not to mention some of the most overpowered bind and equip items in the game called the Bloodvine Set. These are free items for Bloodvine Vest, Bloodvine Leggings and the Bloodvine Boots. This set gives you a massive 4% spell hit and a tremendous amount of spell power, instantly replacing some of the best in slot list items that you can get in Phase 3. And these are BOEs that you can buy from the Auction House, so on Day 1 any given Mage or Warlock can buy free massive gear upgrades that actually replace all of the items that you could get for those slots from Blackwing Lair. And these are items any tailor can make and sell on the auction house. As a mage, I'm pretty excited to see some spell hit items put into the game, as one of the things that keeps my DPS down is getting so many resists when fighting against bosses. Phase 4 is going to help warlocks and mages quite a lot. 
But that's not all. There's also the Zandalarian Hero Charm, which is a much easier version of Talisman of Ephemeral Power to get. This is a trinket that is pretty comparable and gives you a lot of spell power for 20 seconds. But it has a 100% drop chance for Makar, due to the Heart of Hakar quest item. So to put that into perspective, the Talisman of Ephemeral Power has about a 15% chance of dropping from a Molten Core. And it's on a 7 day lockout. Zolgarub has a 100% chance of dropping this trinket, and it resets every 3 days. So pretty much all of the casters in your guild will get this trinket in a matter of weeks. So with casters getting these items, the rogues and fury warriors that are used to dominating the DPS meters might notice some competition from the casters in their guild. However, that is not to say that other classes and specs aren't going to want to go into Zolgarub. And that is due to the overpowered enchants that you can get. All players can now get leg and head enchants that far overpower the stats given from the Diamore Arcanum enchants. Some of the best Zolgarub enchants that you can get, for example, warriors get plus 10 stamina, 7 defense, and plus 15 shield block. Hunters get plus 24 attack power, 10 stamina, and 1% hit. Mages get plus 18 spell damage and 1% spell hit. Priests get plus 10 stamina, plus 4 mana per 5, and plus 24 healing. And the list just goes on. These are huge improvements on the previous enchants that you could get for head and leg pieces. And it doesn't require any reputation beyond friendly with the Zandalar tribe. These are really easy to get enchants. There is also another enchant for shoulders that you can get from Zolgarub. Now enchants for shoulders up to this point have kind of sucked. The best shoulder enchant that you can get is plus 5 resistance to magic schools that you can get from the Argent Dawn. However, Zolgarub changes that. You can now get plus 33 healing, or plus 18 spell damage, or plus 30 attack power to put on your shoulders. These are huge upgrades compared to the Argent Dawn shoulder enchants. However, with that being said, these enchants require you to be exalted with the Zandalar tribe. Quite a significant barrier to entry, as it would either take you many runs of ZG to get the required rep, or by spending thousands of gold to buy turn-in items like bijous and coins until you get exalted. The super tryhard guilds will likely be aiming to get exalted within the first week, just to get those extra stats. So expect the prices of bijous and coins to sell for a tremendous amount of gold after ZG comes out. I really can't wait until phase 4. It's one of the most fun periods of time in Classic WoW, as the bosses are just a lot more engaging and interesting, and for people that are level 60, it will give us a lot more content. Not to mention the aesthetic of Zulgarub is quite a nice change from the dark and dreary atmosphere of Molten Core and Blackwing Lair. Well guys, if you enjoyed this video, please drop a like down below as it helps me out a lot. This is Vaulty, signing out.